Uh, thank you all. I, I, because of uh, my situation, I'm, this is the reason I'm going to quit teaching this class. Probably make some of you happy. So if it does, it's, that's see, I'll help, I'll help a little bit. But uh, <clears throat> I'm going to read a couple of scriptures before we. We're going to start in chapter six this morning. And uh, but there's some scriptures that that stick with me. And uh, Second Timothy 4, Paul was preaching to me, and he says, the time of my, I'm already being offered up, the time of my departure has come. I have fought a good fight, I've finished the course, I've kept the faith, and it's forged laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me in that day, and not to me only, but all those who love his appearing. That's one of my favorites. And another one, Another one of my favorites is uh, no name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ. And all scripture is given by God is good for let me get started here. It's good for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be adequate. One version says perfect. I like that a little bit better unto every good work. So the word of God is what <clears throat> I would I would really feel bad if I would tell you something that's not true. I want it to be the truth because we, we have it all there. So <clears throat> now let's go over to chapter 6 if I can find it. Yes, please. I'm sorry. Romans chapter 6 where I want to start. There it is. No use using the Bible. Well, maybe. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. We who died to sin, how shall we any longer live therein? Or are you ignorant that all who were baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him through baptism unto death that like Christ was raised from the glory of the Father, we might also walk in newness of life. For we, if we have become united with him in this death, we shall also be with like him in his resurrection. Knowing that this, that the old man was crucified with him, that the body might of sin might be done away, so that we should no longer be in bondage to sin. For he that had died is justified from sin, died in Christ. But if we, <clears throat> if we died with Christ, we believe we'll also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath more, more dominion over him. For the death he died, he died once unto sin once, but his life he liveth, he liveth unto God. Even so reckon you your, yourself to be dead to sin, but alive unto God in Jesus Christ. Let not sin reign therefore in your mortal body that you should obey the lust thereof. Neither present your members as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourself unto God as alive from the dead. And your members are instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under law, you're under grace. What then shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Know you not <clears throat> that you present yourself to the servants unto obedience. The servants you are whom you obey, whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Uh, <clears throat> well, that tells us that there's 
two ways to live in this world, right? Obedience. You're either servant to whom you obey. So if you're letting sin be in your body, you're not you're not deeply into the righteousness in yourself. So <clears throat> I want to make sure that we're living according to God's word. Sometimes I don't like some of the things I read and don't want the body, the old physical body doesn't want to do that. But we don't have a choice, do we? Because there's no name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Acts 4.12. <clears throat> Any anybody have a thought they want to interject? We have been made free from sin, and you have become servants of righteousness. I speak in the manner of men because of the infirmities of your flesh, for as you presented your members as servants to uncleanness and to iniquity and to iniquity, Given so now presents your members as servants of righteousness unto sanctification. <clears throat> uh, what does sanctification mean to us? Is it set apart or what does it mean? Set apart. <clears throat> so God says to when we are baptized into Christ, I forget, I was reading, I forgot, I forget a lot of things, but how many times in Christ is mentioned in Romans? So we don't have a whole lot of choice about that. Well, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We can't buy it. We can't sell it. It's just free. And the grace, I have heard uh, a minister say one time that uh, the older people didn't know what grace was. And I disagree with that, totally. Grace is what God gives us. We don't have anything to do with it other than through obedience. That's how we get to grace. But God's grace is totally free and given to us by God through Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I'm not, right now I'm not seeing, but when you see double, like I've been seeing for the last month, off and on. It's kind of, you don't know, uh, you don't know which line to read. And then when you hit that golf ball, it's two on the tee, it's, you don't know which golf ball to hit. So I'm having problems there. But I'm, I think I'm doing a little bit better. Well, are you not ignorant, brother, for I speak to men who know the law, and that the law with dominion over a man as long as he lives, or the, the, for the woman that has a husband is bound by law to her husband as long while he lives, but if he is, the husband dies, she is discharged from the law of the husband. So that's another subject that, that I have a friend who lost his wife a couple of years ago, and he went, went and got married pretty, I don't know, less than six months, I think, after she passed away. And he, he got a lot of criticism for it, but I don't know whether I came to his aid at all. But if, if this is true here, when, when your mate dies, you're free to marry. Is that, is that not what it says? Okay. Okay. And if it's, if it's one day or 100 years or whatever, it's, you're free to that. But then on the other hand, <clears throat> what was I reading on this sheet, I think? I'll get messed up here. Well, anyway, it says if you get rid of your husband or your wife, while they still live, you shall be called an adulteress. So, you can't get rid of them if you got them. You got to keep them. Most times, probably better anyway. I, I don't want to get into that discussion because a lot of people get a little upset over it. Okay. Come on, try somebody's. Uh, 
I wish I could see better, but I can't. It's getting old, it's tough. I don't know about, I don't know about the rest of y'all, what you call yourself, old or not. But I'll be 86 in about two months. And until a week ago Thursday, I'd never been in the hospital in my life. And it was a new experience for me. <laughs> All them things sticking and hanging out of you and plugged up to you. and I didn't like that. So I hope I don't have to go back. Sure. That's just God given yeah. deal that God. Yep. Yeah. It's really not all of you at one time or another probably went through a parent or a child or somebody that has passed away and that's that's but it's difficult. But uh, God's going to judge me according to my deeds, and so when I go, and and, and I'm ready. I think I'm ready. I, I don't know where else I could go. <laughs> you can make an argument any of my time you want to, Tom. He's going to judge you in your relationship with Jesus. Not what? God's going to judge you based on your relationship with Jesus, not on your deeds. Well, I hope I've done some good deeds, but but he will judge me according to my deeds, won't he? Tom, I don't want to argue with you because you know I'm going to win. <laughs> no, you make any comments you want. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question. How do you feel about them? <laughs> uh, that's a, that, there are different, different situations depending on what it is. You know, I, I believe that once you're baptized into Christ, you can turn away. And uh, I, yeah, I would have a problem if I, the situation was that that person had never put on Jesus Christ in baptism. I don't know that. You know, uh, in the parish, you know, and it only goes out in higher circles. Higher circles to begin with, okay, you actually hire some end of the church. It comes to him, he pays him. What that means is, terrible is at what point in your life do you accept Jesus? Even if you're old, you wait until you're old before you find the gospel baptized in the church. You're still safe. That's right. So, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are. You accept Jesus and Baptized into his death, burial, and resurrection, you're safe. As long as you live for whatever life you have. When you come up out of that watery grave, you're just as pretty and clean and white as you can be. You can be young, you can be old. You can be but you might stumble before you get back up the aisle, you know. But anyway, you're right. That's exactly right. No name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that's Acts 4.12, I think. Okay, somebody? Anybody else? Okay, we're going to start now in, uh, what, what, if I can see that. Oh, that's, that's chapter six. This was number seven. Well, we know 
we know the law is spiritual and we are, but I am carnal, sold under sin for that. Oh, this is the, this is the most tongue tangling part of the scripture I think I've ever read in my life. Those verses. Oh, about, uh, about how about starting at about uh, 16. But if what I would do not, that I do, I consent to the law that is good. So now it is no more I that do it, but sin which dwells in me. <clears throat> For I know that in me, it, it is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but to do good, to do that which is good is not. So there's all of us, I don't care who we are and how perfect we think we are, we all fight that fight, sin and doing what's right. Uh, chapter 7, I believe. Chapter 7, about verse 16, 15, 17, 18. For I know in 18, chapter, verse 18, for I know in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but to do that which is good is not. So we know man from all the way back into the Garden of Eden, that the old devil, serpent, Satan, whatever you want to call him, tempted. Well, I think it's, I think it looks like a snake to me. <laughs> but anyway, tempted Eve, and, and I don't know what kind of fruit it was. It was forbidden fruit, wasn't it? Anyway, whatever that was, ever since then, we've, man is, is physical. That's when physical death came to all people. That's when that happened. And now we all say then our physical is not always wanting to go with the spiritual side. But with the help of the Holy Spirit to being, becoming a Christian helps us as we study the Word to be able to push off all of that things that gives us trouble. And all of, there's not any of us perfect, I don't think. I've never seen, well, we had one perfect individual. That was Jesus Christ. But you know, if we could live, if the law, the, the old law of Moses, if people could have lived perfectly under it, it was a perfect law. But man just couldn't live perfect under it. So that's why Jesus Christ had to come and die for us. Thank goodness that he did. Okay. Where, where, where was I? Right there. For when you were servants of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit then had you at that time in the things wherever you're now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But being made free from sin and becoming servants of God, you have your fruit unto sanctification and the end, eternal life. It was those verse, verse six, was 16 while ago said, you're living one, one way or the other. You're living a life of sin into death or a life of obedience into righteousness. But the wage of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's not what I want. And the law came in beside that the trespass might abound, but where sin abound, grace did abound more exceedingly. And I think some folks think the more they sin, they're supposed to grace is supposed to spread further, but that's not what it's talking about. We, uh, we need to be as good as we can, and then we can't live perfectly. Anybody have a comment? <clears throat> okay. What shall we say then if we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, he who died to sin, how shall we any longer live therein? Done very well. 
<clears throat> Therefore, as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and so death passed on to all men, for all have sinned. For until the, for until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. But there's never been a time in history of, the, of this world that there wasn't some kind of law that we had to live under. You know, the old patriarchs lived under their law and then the Mosaic law and then they have the Christian time. And uh, two of those circles are complete, but the thir third one isn't complete yet. <clears throat> Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam until Moses over them that had not sinned after the likeness of Abraham's transgression, of Ab Adam's transgression, who is a figure of him that was to come. But not as the trespass, so also is the free gift. If by the trespass of one many died, which is the physical death, much more than the grace of God and the gift of grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abound unto all or to many. So if you don't have Jesus, you don't have much, do you? You got to have Jesus. And uh, he tells us how to live. Don't. 100% in what I say because I'm just me. But the Word of God is perfect unto all things. Okay, anybody want to? Man, I got a lot of time left. Sir? I don't even know for sure what I, I don't even know for sure what verse I was on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start reading in, in Romans uh, Chapter 8, verse 5. And hope putteth not to shame, because the love of God hath been shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which was given to us. When would we get to? We got the Holy Spirit when we were baptized, didn't we? Okay. And he lives in us, right? For while we were for while we were yet weak, in due season Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one to die. For for he had ventured for a good man some would even dare to die. I don't know whether it's in this chapter, but anywhere where Paul said that. He wish if he could do it, but he he didn't have that he didn't have, he didn't have that authority that he could put himself anathema what anathema is that was what he used anyway that he would die for his kinfolks if he could because they were lost his Israelite friends uh, people he was kin but he says I can't do that. But one thing he did say about Christ. Now I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, hopefully you all don't have this problem in your lifetime. Of course, I've had it for a long time anyway. Not remembering things. For me to live is Christ. For me to die is gain. That was, that's part of what I was thinking about. To die, to live is Christ, to die is gain. I don't know that I don't know that I'm there. I don't know that my I don't know that I would die for my kin folks. Now that's what Paul's saying. I will die I would like to die. I would put myself in the place and be lost if I could save him, but I, he didn't have that he didn't have that choice. And I'm glad I don't have to have that to face that. Because I don't know that my faith is that strong. I think it is, but I'm not sure. Now, them little, them little guys that run around here, it's just barely walking, some of them not even walking yet. I think I could probably give my life for them, but I don't know about you grown-ups. Because I know those little guys, gals, are all pure, in my opinion. 
<laughs> anyway, they're sure nice. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, that's one thing that I've always said since I've been a Christian. God puts that responsibility on me as an individual. I don't have to. I don't have to stand up for you guys. I would, I think, but I. But all the responsibility when God walks, or when Jesus says, "Hey, come here, stand right here." I'm the one that's going to be responsible for the actions I have, no matter no matter who it is. I'm not going to have to stand in for somebody else, and I don't know that I want to. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's a good point. Anybody else? But that did you think about that? That's the only one you got. That's the only one you're going to have to face. In the judgment of Jesus Christ, and he's going to—he's going to be—he's going to be just, Bob. Even to you, he's going to be just. What are you saying, Bob? Bob, I can't hear a word you're saying. <laughs> it's why it's coming through so well. Have you ever been to the watermelon festival? I'm, I've stole watermelons before out of somebody's field. Well, that's another story. Oh, okay. I remember talking to a guy down there. He had two piles of watermelons. They were from the same pack. And one had $5 That's right. I'm happy that the Spirit leads them in. I wish I'd have made this comment. Is, you know, the Spirit is in us. We shouldn't be surprised at what we do, what we say, because the Spirit is leading us. I don't think we need to focus this struggle because Okay. <clears throat> I, 
I would like for somebody to explain to me sometime if they can explain the difference between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If they're all one, how did you get in here, Henry? Good to see you, sir. You all right? Good deal. This one of my old friends used to be go to church here. I'm glad to see you. I just, I, how, I've never had anybody explain to me how, the difference between God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is the Word, but the Spirit was on the surface of the water when God created the world. And God's always been there, number one. So uh, what's the difference? What's the difference of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? We got the perfect word, it says, over in James. So if you got a perfect word, why are we concerned so much with other things? Because God doesn't give anything out except stuff that's perfect. Is that your arm up, Murph? Okay, good deal. Merv, I didn't, of course, I'm sorry, but I, I just don't hear anything anymore much. I know you were talking. <laughs> Romans what? Okay. Over in uh, Romans. Well, if I can figure out where I'm at here. I've got it all here. I just can't figure it out. Eight. Uh, is, is it, if you, will you go on and read the, about the last four verses in that chapter? Yeah, just start at 12 and go on. Okay. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of the. I can't think of it. I'm sorry. I apologize. My mind just ain't working very well this morning. Never has worked very well, but it's sure not working very well this morning. Uh, and that's a weird feeling to be healthy for say 86 years, and then all at once you can't can't find nothing or say not anything. But anyway. I apologize for having been that way this morning, but I'm going to let somebody else teach next week. But uh, where is, where, what is that? Is it 8 or 12 chapter in Romans? It says, there's neither height nor depth nor whatever. What is, that? is that 8 or eight or 12 chapter? Merv. There'll be nothing that can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I think it's, I think it's, it may be 12, but it could be eight. Where's it at, Mark? <laughs> Can you read? 
where it says it's, there's either life nor death and whatever and all that. Somebody read that. Somebody's got that. Thank you, sir. That's what I was talking about. When is class over? Maybe over now. I don't. Oh, another five minutes. Anybody have a comment, sir? Okay. I, was, I thought it was eight, but I wasn't. I wasn't going to say for sure. I thought Bill was finding it for me, but he hadn't found it yet either, so whatever. Tom, read that out. Can you, you read that out loud? All the best ones in there. Just do that. All of that. All of God's word. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, I'm not one to be asking in my life for much of anything. But I, I would appreciate it if all of y'all would say a prayer for me on that. So I, I don't know what's going to happen to me. I've been having these little strokes for the last month or so. And uh, didn't have a whole lot of lot. Didn't have a whole lot of stuff to lose. So <laughs> anyway, but I appreciate y'all listening to me, and and have a good week, and we'll have a good sermon here in a little bit. And anyway, thank you. <laughs>